I recently wrote an article on laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair. There were a couple of reasons I chose that. One, it's a very common condition. Almost a third of men and 10% of women will develop an inguinal hernia at some point in their life. Not all of those become symptomatic and require repair, but a large percentage of them do. So I thought it would appeal to a, a large population of people that might be interested in it. And then with laparoscopic repair, I thought it could help educate uh, patients as to another option, and maybe a better option for their, their surgical repair. Benefits unique to laparoscopic surgery include a shorter recovery time, less post-operative discomfort, better cosmesis in my opinion, and the ability to repair either recurrent hernias or bilateral hernias through the same small incisions. For all those reasons, I thought it would be worthwhile to educate uh, patients as to that option. Signs and symptoms of an inguinal hernia, um, they vary from patient to patient. The majority of them are asymptomatic, meaning a patient hasn't discovered incidentally on a routine physical examination by a primary care provider. And then they tend to progress over time to where you can have an uncomfortable bulge in the groin or lower abdomen. They tend to enlarge over time and they can become what we call incarcerated or stuck where the hernia will protrude from the abdomen or the groin but won't go back in. When that happens, it's then a surgical emergency or at least urgency in the very least. So I think it's important for patients who have a hernia to at least have consulted with a general surgeon so they know management options, whether it's watchful waiting or whether it's heading directly to the operating room.